All right, you rats, chads, and everything in between. Today I got a banger video for you. We're going to be going over Shooter Born in Heaven for Beginners. This is my third wipe and my first time ever completing this quest, and I wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks that I learned along the way to make your lives a lot easier. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, and comment below and let me know what you think about the guide. All right, guys, so here it is. I completed Shooter Born in Heaven. We're going to break this video down into two parts to help you guys get through this quest as easy as possible. The first part is going to be gun selection, and the second part is going to be positioning on all four maps. So without further ado, let's get into the guns. All right, first up on the list is the ADAR. With the ADAR, you don't really need many parts to make this work. The ADAR is a great gun for not only those long-range kills, but just in case if anyone sneaks up on you while you're trying to do your shooter born, you'll have something a lot better than just a sniper rifle in your hand to defend yourself. Now with the ADAR, I recommend a couple different parts. Number one, obviously, is just a suppressor. Put anything you like on this gun, and it will work. The second part is the scope. There's probably two or three recommendations that I have, but honestly, use whatever you feel most comfortable with. One is just the Voodoo. The Voodoo is great. I've talked about it in previous videos. I highly recommend this scope. The other one is something new. It's the Vortex Razor. This one is really, really good, although it's quite pricey. It can be around the 70, 75, 80K mark. Other than that, there's not much you need. In terms of ammo, I would use M855A1 or if you have it, M995. Throughout the course of Shooter Born in Heaven, I use both. I was successful with both. You have to hit a headshot either way and both will do the job. All right, next up on the list, we got the RFB. The RFB is notoriously known for being loud. So I highly recommend you put a suppressor on this thing. I personally love the wave, so that's what I got here. In terms of a scope, you can go with a razor, you can go with a voodoo, or you can go with a TAC-30. Again, personal preference, uh, whatever whatever fits you and your budget. I also recommend putting a foregrip on this. I like the RK-2, but if you're not level 42, you can go with an RK-1 or something like that. Uh, but definitely recommend a foregrip for this as it helps keep uh, control of the weapon. Uh, greatly this gun will also help you out if people sneak up from behind you because you can single fire this very very quickly and get out of those uh quick close combat situations very very easily next up on the list we got the t5000 this one might surprise you guys a bit but this is what i got all my shoreline kills done with this bolt action feels really really good to me but as, as long as you got the suppressor on it and some sort of scope like a razor or a voodoo i promise you guys will have great success with this as well this build comes in around 220,000 rubles which is quite expensive so if you've got the cash to spend and you love using bolt action rifles i highly recommend you guys check this out all right, so now that I showed you guys the guns that I used to complete the quest, now I'm going to show you guys the spots that I got the kills at. First, we're going to start off with customs. All right, so we are on customs. For those that don't know, I am on the hill behind uh, New Gas, um, and I can see over here into the uh, construction area or you know whatever you guys want to call this area here. This spot is uh, kind of risky because, well, number one, a lot of people coming out of uh, the building here, the warehouse building here, are going to look up at you, and you also have people that can come up from behind you and sneak away or sneak up on you. So I would not recommend taking any sort of like bolt action uh, rifle up here. I would take it like an ADAR or an RFB. Um, so what I like to do is I like to kind of sit in this bush that's uh, kind of like right in line with this warehouse. Um, that way I can't be seen from gas. Um, and I can't really be seen from the door coming out of the warehouse that people flow out of. But what I can see is this high traffic area where people come either, you know, from, from, from green room and they kind of come in through here or the people that are coming from old gas going to green. So this highway right here is super high traffic. And as you guys can see, we're kind of rocking at 125, 130 meters, which is right in that shooter born range. So when you're when you're in this spot, I highly recommend kind of sitting prone um, and you can you can zero in at 150 and just just sit here and wait patiently for your kills. You'll get, um, you know, at least one raid um, as long as you obviously don't miss. The other option you have here um, is listen for um, shots over by like where you do your golden pocket watch quest from this spot. If you stand up, if you hear gunshots to your far right, just stand up briefly and kind of take a take a take a peek over at um, the boxes here. They're about 280 meters out. This is the um, I don't know. People call it like skeleton or whatever. Um, this is the the loot box there, which is 200 uh, 280 meters exact, pretty much, right? So um, and people are just sitting still, waiting to get sniped as they're looting that crate box. So that's an easy, easy kill for you uh, from this spot. So this is the first spot on customs of three that I'm going to show you guys, and here is the next one. 
All right, so we are in spot number two. As you can tell, I am at the train uh, before the river that goes over to uh, Ruaf or to the construction site over there. Um, the spot that I like to go is actually right in this bush here. And this is uh, this also depends on the spawn you get as long as you're on the big red side. But there's two different options here. You can sit in this bush and you can watch the uh, hole in the wall, which is right here, which is 152 meters, which is right in that range that you need. You can also get people that kind of get right here on the slope. So the farther you move down, obviously the closer uh, you are to get into that 100 mark. But anywhere pretty much up in the slope area is, is good to go um, and up to the up to the uh, hole in the wall is golden. You can catch people running left to right. Let's say this is late in the raid. People run left to right down this road or through the through the brush, through the brush behind uh, the street here. Uh, you can get them trying to go to the Ruf extract, um, which works really really well. The other way to look at this is um, you can look pretty much directly at the tank. People coming from like crack house, you can kind of catch them right in here. Um, to that wall is like 167, which is a pretty long shot, but you can get them a little bit closer, which is 133. So this spot works really, really well. Next up, we got spot number three. All right, we're here at spot number three. Spot number three is not that much different than spot number two. Spot number two is right over here along this wall, uh, right where the, the train meets that, that hut almost. Um, and we're actually gonna go right into this tipped over car here. This one is really, really good because you can kind of hide right behind these branches here where no one will see you, but you can easily see the Ruf extracts. So you just sit here and camp and wait for people to come out and you, you got them. So to the truck itself is 124. You can also catch people coming up the hill um, at 120. Anything longer than that is obviously good as well as 145. You might be wondering, well, this is pretty risky because like what if I'm in here and people are spawning behind me and they're running by? I kid you not, I was in this spot before a team of, of four who spawned back on crossroads. They came in here and just ran right past me. Two ran on this on the right side and two ran on the left. They came right down here, funneled in. They crossed the land bridge up and over. And I got two of them on the hill that counted for Shooterborn. So this spot is really, really easy. And for some reason, no one checks to look inside this train car. And you can easily get your kills from this spot. So that wraps up the custom spots. I hope these work for you guys. Let's move on to woods. All right, so now we're on woods. I'm gonna give you guys about two and a half-ish spots that you guys can use for Shooterborn. And no, I'm gonna tell you right now, one of them is not on top of Sniper Rock because that is just way too obvious. The first spot is here, or actually all two and a half-ish spots are here at Lumber Mill. So the first one, if you're looking at Lumber Mill, uh, we're gonna head to the left here. Um, there's going to be a set of bushes right before you get to the beach. And we're gonna go towards the left-hand side of the very first bush here. Or, yeah, this, I, I guess you could call it the second bush because there's like a series of three. Um, so right here, so I got one shooter born kill done while someone was planting their camera for their quest. This is 124 meters. Um, you might be able to get a kill here while someone's planting like the glasses and stuff um, at the quest here. This does say 108, um, but I did kill someone here and it didn't count. It was like 91 for some reason. Now I might've not been positioned right or they might've just been weird. It could have been a glitch, whatever. Um, but this does say it's 108, but don't count on it. Um, it was very, very weird for me. Um, the other one is people love to do shooter born on top of the rocks here. Uh, to the front of the rock at the top where they kind of peek their head is, is 180. Um, I had this um, I had this zeroed out at, at 200 and got the um, and, and hit him, but I didn't get the kill. Um, so I knew it was a, at least a good zero. Um, I just missed the headshot. But again, um, this spot here is money because you can catch people again, placing their camera, planting the glasses, doing shooter born up on the, up on the rock here. And you can also catch people from spawn kind of running up and behind sawmill, um, as well. Again, a much further shot closer to 200, maybe like 205, 210. Um, but again, you can get this very, very easily from here. So now we're going to move to the second spot. All right, we've made it to the second spot. The second spot is still in Sawmill. So we were actually just right up on the cliff, uh, right up in here somewhere, um, maybe actually a little further to the right, right up in here. And um, the next one is actually in the tree line here. Um, so just as I came from that direction of woods, um, we're now gonna look the opposite way and do the same exact thing, but in another direction. So from here, we can catch people kind of coming down the beach again, 105, 111 um, at the 
first kind of big section of rocks here and then as you move kind of further down the beach you get the 120s 130s 150s very very easy to get these kills because once they're on this beach they are just a deer in headlights they don't really have anywhere to go you shoot them in the legs then they really can't move out of the beach area um, and you can get that free kill another options are up on the hill which is a little bit further 150 you can get into that 200 range um, much higher up as you go as people kind of want to loop around uh, sawmill so this again is a very very uh, nice spot it's hard to see in these trees, especially during most positions of the sun and when there's fog out. Um, so highly recommend this. The only thing you have to be careful of is people coming up from behind you um, over by the scav house or someone up above that might be doing shooter born from up on top of the rock. Now the next position I have is really only if you hear someone up on the sniper rock, um, but again you can kind of hug these trees behind you to get some, or behind here to get some cover, um, and you can, you know, you can peek him from anywhere from like, you know, in here to, to look for the kill, um, or you can um, go up on top of the uh, ridge here. Uh, to also secure the kill. This one works very, very well. I would be careful not to peek your head too, too high over the edge of the rocks here as you kind of want to blend in with the rocks without being seen from, you know, sniper rock or anywhere in sawmill just in case uh, Sturman is up. So these are my spots on woods that I recommend for you guys. At least these ones will give you high, high traffic, um, high, high traffic flow um, compared to other spots in the map, um, which will help you guys get this done very, very easily. All right, next up is reserve. All right, so next up we're on reserve, and as you guys can tell, it is foggy and raining. This was by far the hardest map for me to complete shooter board and have been done because the entire time it was this exact same weather conditions. Fog, rain, can't see more than like 50 meters in front of you. It was awful. But I have two spots I want to show you guys where I completed this, and um, by no means was it easy, but this did get the job done. So first we're going to go into White Pond, and we are going to go all the way to the fourth floor where... Um, one more where we can look over um, the manhole extract. I always love to close the door behind me because um, people can come up here and obviously kill you and then be aware of the broken glass on the floor because it does make a noise if you do move around. Looking out this window you can see a sewer extract right here. Um, again 124 meters to the extract. Um, the only really downside is if people do prone it's almost impossible to see them. You might be able to pick their head up if you kind of stand on the box here. Um, you might be able to have have some better luck as you're looking kind of down in here. Um, but most of the time, people are kind of just standing behind that truck because they're actually afraid of the sniper hill. Um, so, so from here, very easy kills. You have hatchet runners, people just trying to get quests come in and out. Um, this is a high traffic area um, for people that want to want to extract very very easily you also have the fields behind tank um, there is a high traffic uh, you know uh, what, what, whatever you want to call it um, pathway here that kind of runs to the left of tank and people kind of flow through here uh, to orange you can get kills um, this way as well and then you can also get people running left to right if they're coming from from tank um, and if they're heading to like bl uh, black night white night whatever midnight area um, you can get those kills as well uh, here. So this is a really good spot. A lot of people don't use it, um, but again, this is your 120 meter shot, which will easily get you um, some shooter borns done here um, as well. So this is spot number one. Let's move to spot number two. All right, here we are at spot number two on reserve. So we are at the top of the kind of, I'll call it sniper sniper rock here. We've got dome above us and we're kind of looking over orange, the tankers, there's queen. I like to go to the left here, a little bit less obvious than kind of sitting on the middle of the rock here. Um, and I kind of look for this rock that's sitting next to this bush. Um, and what I'll do is I'll lay down kind of right on the edge. Let me get my gun out so I can show you guys. And you kind of have to find the sweet spot where you can move down, up, and left, and right. If you don't get it perfectly, I got it perfectly first try, but if you don't get it perfectly, you won't be able to move down or up or pretty far right. You kind of have to wiggle around to get that right spot. If you look too far left, your gun will eventually bug out. I believe it's when you're zoomed in. Oh, so I actually nailed it here. It's not doing it, but this is a really good spot. Um, you blend in very well with this bush, um, and I'll show you guys the uh, ranges uh, right now. So looking over at the pathway, anything in here is golden. So you got people running from the fields from spawn. Um, so you got 160, um, 180, uh, 170, anything in here is, is good to go. And then as you're on this, if they're running along tank, uh, tank wall here, 130, 140, and then right into tank is 150. So that's, those are free kills as well. 
Now, in terms of anything kind of in front of you near near gas station, um, it's it's tough to get people at extract here because it's like right on that edge, like 100 meters. So try not to kill them last minute. If you can kill them kind of up near gas, you know, 120 or up in midnight, which is like, you know, anywhere from like 150 to 190, um, that's golden as well. And then you've got people come out of like queen or tents, which is like, you know, 112 right around this area. And then I actually got a shooter born done uh, right on the back side of this hill here. He was right in this little crevice, which is like right on that hundred meter mark, and and it counted. Um, so anything closer than that, it's probably too late. But it, anything in that sweet area of like midnight uh, to the road in front of Queen or anything in front of Tank um, is really really good as well, and you'll get your kills done here. Again, this one took me a very long time. I think it's just because not a lot of people are playing reserve um, much anymore. I mean, everyone kind of heads down to D2. Um, so that brings up another point where if if you don't really spawn on this side of the map if you're kind of spawning over in the fields or whatever um, and, and, and you can't get here I mean probably better chances everyone's kind of down in the bunkers um, so you might just want to reset and, and start over um, so yeah so these are my spots in reserve I hope they work for you guys uh, next up is shoreline all right now we are on shoreline this was probably the easiest map for me to complete the quest on. I'm going to show you guys a couple different spots where you guys can do uh, get this done very, very quickly. So first up here, we've got the uh, ocean here on the left um, with, the, with the highway, and here we're at gas station. Uh, what I love to do is kind of find these, like, uh, these, these, these couple trees here uh, that are just in front of gas, um, and I like to lay down right in front of them um, just, so, just so I can... Um, uh, see 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 the pier. So this is a very hot spot as you guys know You've got keep people coming from the opposite side of the map um, down the highway, which is about 170 160 and then they're heading off to pier to go either get quest items or loot whatever maybe uh, maybe the 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 um, the bosses spawn down here, or whatever. Um, people are people are running down here, so you can get kills very very easily. Um, at the car, you've got 180. Further down towards like the toll or hut, whatever you want to call it, 207. Um, and then, like I said, where people are kind of entering this area is is 170, 160, 150 ish. Um, so a really really good spot to get kills. Um, and it, and it, it is like a um, a choke point, right? Once they go down here, there's really no other way out unless um, unless the boat's up for extract. And even if the boat's up for extract, you can still kind of see kind of where they're going, and you can really get that shot at like 300 if they're laying down right there. So really really good spot to get those kills from. The other one is actually very, very close. Um, we're going to run up the hill to the left here and go up towards power. So as people spawn on the other side of the map, there's a few different ways they're going to go. They're either going to go to resort, they're going to come over here to power, or they're going to go down to the pier. For the folks that um, run over to like power side here, I like to kind of come in this bush here. Um, you can see, you know, people coming from a mile away, um, you know, right in that 200, 160 range. Um, as you get over here, you kind of have to wait for them to be up in like the ridges here for them to be in that 150. Um, but for some reason, a lot of people like to go on top of these rocks right here to, to snipe or kill all the scavs that spawn at, at power. So that rock in here is 136 to the front of the cliff, and then anything right above that is, is you know, probably right in that 150, 160 range um, for easy, easy kills. Again, make sure just to disguise yourself as much as possible with with the uh, with the bushes up here. I don't think it really matters which one. I prefer the first one just so I can like rotate down to gas if I hear shots at pier, um, or if I hear shots here, I can easily move back and forth. Uh, so this is spot number two. Spot number three, which is the last one, is coming up now. All right, and last up, we are on the road to custom side of Shoreline. Uh, for positioning, I am very close to the outside wall, and I'm almost at a 90 degree angle to um, East Wing. So coming up here, uh, if you're running up the hill, we have this broken shack um, up on top of the hill, and there's actually just a bush right here that I um, sat in and got uh, my kills from. I was using my T5000 from here and actually picked off two people. If you spawn on like kind of in this area um, early on in in the in the raid, obviously, um, there's a few things you want to look out for. People kind of crossing left to right um, and trying to go up this up this mountain ridge here, um, and then people just hugging the wall on the outside, trying to just be cautious and do some sort of task, right? So I got one kill of someone um, up in the uh, up on top of the ridge here. I'm um, trying to get into resorts. So that was at like the 130, uh, 140 mark. 
and the other one I got was uh, right in this little valley here at uh, at at 125 or 130. Um, so definitely definitely be patient with these kills, right? There's a lot of open area here, um, and if you can get if you can blow someone's legs off, they're pretty much again like a deer in headlights, and you can really get that kill easily. Um, if you wait too late, you are gonna be right in that 93, 85. 85 zone right a little not great over here um, so if you do miss and they don't know where you are because you are silenced um, let them kind of let them kind of run up and, and follow the the fence line because once once they do that you can kind of sit on top of this rock and re-engage at this like at this like 118 120 140 mark um, as long as they get past this 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 one tree here and you can probably secure that kill there um, if you can't get them again when you just keep missing I mean you can keep moving up um, and following them around the map and then you, you'll be able to see them at this like 160 170 mark tough shot to hit but again um, multiple multiple chances from this one spot to kill you know at least one or two different PMCs um, or multiple if there's if there's a large party so there it is guys, I ran through all four maps, I went through all the different spots, the ranges, I talked about all the different guns that I used throughout this quest, um, and I hope this really helps you guys um, complete Shooterborn in Heaven uh, very, very easily. If this guide works for you, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment below and let me know what you think about the guide, and subscribe for more content if you want to see more stuff like this in the future.